I'm Lauren Parzikian. I'm Molly Thompson. And we are the co-founders of Kind Campaign and the filmmakers of the documentary that you are about to watch. So the two of us uh, founded Kind Campaign while we were at Pepperdine University. And immediately after graduating, the summer after our senior year, we got into a minivan with both of our moms and made a huge circle around America, logging over 10,000 miles, um, speaking with hundreds of girls and women all over the country about just the brokenness within female relationships and this mean girl phenomenon that kind of uh, has swept our nation and it's just this universal experience that we all share and just really trying to figure out why this happens. We're just so passionate about what we do and the reason why we are, um, a lot of that passion is rooted in our personal experiences. So we're gonna share with you um, kind of what we've been through. In sixth grade, I really identified myself with a specific group of girls and um, really trusted these girls and felt like this was my close group of friends. And going Going into seventh grade, there was a birthday party. And at that birthday party, uh, a couple of these girls started a rumor about me and spread it around the around the birthday. And within a matter of minutes, every single person at this party uh, kind of went along with this rumor that they all knew wasn't true and conformed to this idea that it was the cool thing to hate me now. And I ended up in the bathroom crying, trying to get my mom on the phone because all of these girls that I, again, was really close with just minutes before were running around the party screaming my name and threatening me. And um, it was just such a crazy experience for me and I just remember sitting there so confused as to why this was happening to me and why these girls again that I was so close with would turn on me like this so I ended up going home that night and uh, there was a sleepover with all these girls after the party that I didn't go to because of what had happened. And uh, at that sleepover, one of the girls ended up getting up and leaving the party and coming to my house that night. And she ended up really sticking with me throughout the next two years of my life. Because while she was at the sleepover, she uh, listened to and watched these girls take out a pen and paper and write down all of the ways that they wanted to ruin my life over the next two years. And she just decided that that was something that she didn't want to be a part of. Um, and what she came to find while she was at this sleepover was that the root of this whole dramatic situation that these girls had created was a boy that liked me, that one of these girls liked, so they kind of wanted to bring me down, which is um, such an unfortunate reality in so many girls' lives, just us letting the people that we like get in the way of our friendships. Um, but that girl just decided that that wasn't something that she wanted to be a part of. And if you can imagine a sixth grade girl, maybe there's six, some sixth graders in here right now, so if you can imagine being at a birthday party and having having enough courage to get up and walk out of that situation because you don't believe in what's happening. Um, it was just such a courageous thing for her to do. And she's actually still one of my best friends to this day. And I truly will forever feel indebted to her because she was my only friend throughout seventh and eighth grade. And because she stood up for me, she went through a lot as well. Um, and you know, I may not be standing here today if it wasn't for her friendship. When you are dealing with these things, it's so important to open up to someone especially an adult because as much as you think you're cooler than, than them and that they don't understand or can't relate to you, they've been there too and they really do have the tools and resources to get you help if you need it. Um, another thing just thinking back on my experience is just the fact that I remember feeling like my... Um, my uh, experience with these girls and the social pressures I was dealing with was my entire world. And I think sometimes when we're in school, it's really hard to see the bigger picture and to know that there's so much more to your life um, and so many different chapters ahead of you and people that you're going to meet and the fact that some of these really tough times, as big, um, as big as they feel, it's not your entire story and the fact that there's so much in store for you. So I grew up in Dallas, Texas, and it wasn't until my junior year of high school that I really um, experienced this with other girls. And I was friends with a group of, or yeah, a group of girls. And one girl um, within this group decided that she did not want me to be a part of this group anymore. She didn't want to be my friend, but she also didn't want the other girls within that group to be my friend anymore. And so she did everything that she could um, until I um, was no longer accepted by that group of girls. And I dreaded coming to school 
after that. I, whenever we had passing periods, I would go and I would find the nearest bathroom and I would hide in one of the bathroom stalls until the next bell rang. And I would wait, you know, until the bell rang and then I would go to class late because I didn't want to be seen by these girls walking through the hallways by myself because I was so em embarrassed about what they would think about me. And I was on dance team with these girls and whenever we had water breaks, I would go and I would get my cell phone just as soon as I could and I would call my mom and kind of force her to talk to me. And if she couldn't talk to me at the time, I would have fake pretend conversations with myself because I was that insecure about what this group of girls who wanted absolutely nothing to do with me, I was that insecure about what they would think about me if you know I, I didn't have anyone to talk to. So I made it look like you know I always had someone to talk to. Um, and it escalated to the point where this girl who had turned my friends against me punched me in the face. And at that point, I never wanted to step foot in my school hallways again, not only because I didn't want to see that group of girls, but I just didn't want to see anyone within my school again. And um, I'm, I'm so thankful that during that time period, I relied a lot on my mom and I shared what I was going through with my parents and um, I relied on the friendship that I had um, with friends outside of school and extracurricular activities. And I think it was because of that I was able to continue going to school every single day and um, you know facing these feelings of sadness and loneliness. But I'm thankful that I did because on the very last day of my junior year of high school, I was walking through the hallway during class. So no one else was really in the halls at that time because everyone was in class. And um, this girl who had started the rumors and punched me in the face also happened to be walking through the hallways at that time. And I remember when I saw her, my heart started racing because I was afraid of what she might say or what she might do. And we crossed paths and she called out my name and she said, Molly, I'm so sorry for everything that I've done to you. I don't know why I did it, and I'm so sorry. And for me, that was huge, because that entire year, I was questioning myself and wondering, you know, why is this happening? What did I do wrong? And, you know, why is this happening to me? And as Lauren and I have traveled all over the country, that's something that we hear on a daily basis from girls and boys who have been really negatively affected by things that have been said and done to them. They're wondering, you know, why is this happening? And her simple answer of, I don't know why, you know, I did these things to you, is something that we also hear on a daily basis from uh, girls who have said and done things that have really, really negatively affected other girls, and they can't place why they did those things. They don't know if it's you know, the insecurities that they have, what's going on in their personal lives or their family lives. They have no idea why they're doing those things. And so I think that just goes to show um, that when these things are happening to you, if anyone in here is going through something, know that it's not about you. It's something that's going on you know, within that person, and most likely they don't know, you know why they're doing the things that they're doing. But I think it also goes to show her apologizing to me how transformative that was for me. I was able to move past my junior year experience and see that there was more to life and that I was going to, you know, be happy again and and you know have other friends. And um, it's just again, it just shows how important an apology can be. But because of that experience, my junior year, that's why I'm so incredibly passionate about Kind Campaign.